Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. It's Paul King once again. Um, and you know that uh, I'm a bit mad over the F-Series Vauxhall Victor. So I thought I'd show you my um, brochure collection. Yeah, better that you see it and it's out and about rather than being stuck in its cardboard box under the stairs. It's where it's been since about 1983. Started collecting these in 1978, not long after I got the car. And gave up in about 83, 84. Got a bit much. So starting at the top, at the back, we can see that uh, we've got a picture of the estate car from 1958, the Series 1 estate, and a generalised orange brochure for the F-Series. And after that, the approved accessories. Now that's the 1957 version. And to the right of that, we've got the overdrive from Laycock. You didn't see many Victors with that fitted, but you sure did find uh, quite a few of them on the PA series, the Locks and Cresters. They needed them with that six cylinder lump. The next line is another very early 57 brochure for the accessories and following three series one brochures. The next line down is the Series 2s, and I actually owned a Deluxe, the same as the one in the picture, but it was uh, lamp blue instead of royal blue, the top half, and silver grey, the bottom. So it was basically exactly the same, but just a different colour. And of course, XOT362 was in Regency Cream, and there is a Regency Cream Series 2. Maybe I should have tipexed out VEF91 and put XOT. Nah, of course not. Wouldn't spoil it. The General Series 2 brochure, very nice as it is. Oh, it's stuck together, you see, look. It's been hidden away so many years, it's actually stuck together. Oh, I'll peel that away later, I'm not gonna do that now. Nice brochure, that one. It did actually have uh, the dealer's stamp on it, but the sun has uh, removed it quite nicely, so it's not spoiled. Now, look at this, Envoy. Ho, ho, ho. The Canadian Victor. This is a beautiful brochure. Look at that. Beautiful in black. But notice you've got the colour schemes running along the top. And the colour of the car is along the bottom. Now this is the only brochure I've ever seen like this. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. I think the envoy was really, really nicely styled. And that is obviously a 61 envoy. And just over there is a Dutch brochure. It's only a single page one for some reason. Moving on to the 61. Very nice brochure this one. Quite a lot in it. Quite like that. Look at that colour. That is, what is that? That's supposed to be maroon. Well, if that's maroon, I'm an uncle's monkey. Right, now, here's a nice one. Features of the 61. Very nice. And I like this picture of the chrome. Look at that. That's a great picture, that one. Now, <laughs> you, if you know me, you know that I'm a nut over the Vauxhall 2 pedal control. I never did get one, unfortunately. Made by Alfred and Alder. And marketed by Newton Bennett and Newton Bennett called it Newton Drive. I actually seen it on a standard 8 or standard 10 um, because they sold it to them as well. Um, but there are major differences between the standard and the Vauxhall one. Now while we're on that I've got a treat. I'm probably the only person in the world who's got this. Notice the part number. Now, there's another thing. Part numbers. You know how to actually say them. You don't go 6314793. The parts men of the day pronounced it 6314793. Yeah, an interesting useless fact, but I quite like it. And what have we got in that box? Yes, it's a gear lever. But that is a Newton Drive gear lever. 
Why has it got that wire running through a gear lever? Because it's touch sensitive. As soon as you touch that, the relay is engaged. And through the relays and the vacuum, the clutch pedal action would have taken place. And as soon as you let go of that, it knew you were in gear and it engaged the gear properly. But there you go, brand new, still in its box, getting a little bit rusty there. But that's probably the only one I'll ever see and probably the only one you'll ever see. But that is treasured. And I have Kevin Greenwood to thank for that. Thanks, Kevin. Let's move on. Facts about the Austin A55 and the Vauxhall Victor. For use by Vauxhall salesmen, not for public issue. So I imagine in the day that the Vauxhall salesman had to learn all of this so he could compare the two cars. Don't know. Maybe he didn't. And finally, or almost finally, the preliminary service information, Vauxhall Model F. This is the service manual for the car pre-launch. So this went out to all the dealers so they knew actually how to work on the car. So basically, it's the five service manuals briefly combined into one. A very rare piece that, and I'm pleased to be the owner of it. After I completed the video, I came across this letter, which is a great shame. Um, it was absolutely swimming in, in dots all over the page because it was presumably produced on what was called a bander machine. It, it was a drum with a handle and it rotated. You can only do one sheet to copy at a time, but it splashed ink terribly. And I had to use Photoshop to clean this one up. Uh, and it looks pretty good, I think. So yeah, this letter, as it says, was sent out with the complimentary uh, service manual. And finally, yes, this is finally, a day to remember the Vauxhall story. Now, obviously this is a photocopy. I don't have the original. I think David Whiteley's got the original. I hope you still got it. There's some lovely pictures of the factory and details of the factory. Cracking pictures, those, look at that. And I think there's one of the underbody sealant being applied somewhere, no. Must be further, must be near the middle. The wonderful sealant that went rock hard and fell off and caused the cars to rust terribly. If it didn't fall off, it created a moisture trap. Oh, that's funny. I could have sworn this one had the uh, picture of the under seal being applied. Oh, well, maybe memory's going. Maybe the memory's going. Must be. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. I hope you liked it. It was only a quickie. Take care. Well, the picture of the under seal being sprayed was there. It was in the second page, but look, the quality is so bad. No wonder I didn't see it. At least I'm not going mad. <laughs>